we're going to look at an example of computing the mean for a probability distribution. So this probability distribution represents the number of DVDs a person rents from a video store during a single visit. So we have our probability distribution with the values of x in this column and the probabilities of x in the second column. Now we could look at the probability histogram to try and estimate the value of the mean. But what we want to do here is actually figure out how to calculate it. So if we're going to calculate it by hand, what we do is add a column to the table, and that column is going to be x times p of x. In other words, for each row in this table, we're going to take the x times the p of x, and we're going to calculate those in our added column. So over here I already have 0 times 0 0.06 and 1 times 0 0.0 and 1 times 0.58. We would calculate the rest of those values and then add up the results and that would give us our mean. So again, to do this by hand, you just mul multiply each x value by its probability and then add up the results. Now we also want to look at how to do this with your graphing calculator. So I put a little bit into this slide to get you started on how to do this, but this isn't the easiest thing in the world to do on your calculator. So I actually want to show you how to go through all of this. So what we're going to do on the calculator is go to our lists, and that we get to by pushing the stat button. It'll come up here and say edit. That's what we want, so we push enter. And now we have our list that says L1, L2. And if you've used this previously, you might have some numbers in these lists. If that's the case, you should go through and delete them. So to delete them, just use your up arrow so that the name of the list is highlighted, and then push Clear, and then push Enter. That will delete anything that was already in the list. You can do the same thing for L2 if you have any numbers there. So again, just arrow up so the name of the list is highlighted, then push Clear, and then push Enter. Now we want to go back and enter the x's and the probabilities into the two lists. We're going to put the x's into list 1 and the probabilities into list 2. So I'm already here in list 1, so I'm just going to start entering my numbers. So we're going all the way from 0 up to 5 for the x's, and then I'm going to arrow over to my list 2, and now I'm going to put in all the probabilities. Now when I have all those in there, what I want to do to find the mean and even the standard deviation for this probability distribution is I want to go back to my stat. I'm going to use the one bar stats, so I want to go over to Calc. I'm going to select the one bar stats. Now here's where it's a little bit different than the way we used this before. So since I actually have two lists that I want my calculator to look at, here where it says L1, I can leave that the way it is. That's where my x value should be. Where it says frequency list, there I want to tell it L2. So to get L2, I'm going to use second and the 2 button. So that says L2. Then I'm going to enter and enter again. And this is giving me my mean for my probability distribution. Remember, x bar is the symbol for the sample mean. So here we've got the mean for our probability distribution is 1.49. Now, if we wanted the standard deviation, what we did before with one bar stats, the sx was the standard deviation we used. But in this one, if you've put in your probabilities correctly so that they add up to 1, then this sx should come out blank. So what we have to use for this for the standard deviation is the sigma x. So our standard deviation would be 0.93. Our 
mean for the probability distribution would be 1.49. One more thing I want to show you, that is if you have a little bit older calculator, when you go to the calc menu and select your one bar stats, it will just come up on the screen and say one bar stats like this. Now for this one, you have to tell it that you want it to use both L1 and L2. So to get L1, you do second and the one button. Then you need to do a comma and tell it L2 by do, doing second and the L2 button. If you put both of those in there, then it will calculate, again, your mean and your standard deviation for your probability distribution. Okay, so we found that the mean is 1.49. Now let's look at another example, and this one has to do with expected value. So this is an expected value for a game. In this game, we're drawing just one card from a regular deck. If it's a heart or a diamond, we win $2. If it's a club, we win $3. If it's a spade, we lose $8. We want to find the expected value. Expected value is the same as the mean. So first, we're going to do this by hand. What this means is that we need to set up our probability distribution table first and then we're going to add a column to it and do the x times p of x like we talked about before. So here would be our complete table for our probability distribution. Notice in the x column, we have the amounts of money that you win or lose depending on what type of card you get. So if it's a heart or a diamond, you win $2. And we're doing this from the point of view of the player. So winning $2 means that we have a positive 2. If you draw a club, you win $3, so we have a positive 3. If you draw a spade, you lose $8, and we're signifying that losing of $8 by making that a negative 8. For the probabilities, since there are an equal amount of hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades in the deck, each of those probabilities is just equal to 1 fourth, because each of those is 1 fourth of the deck. Okay, so here where we're doing it by hand, we have each one of these x's times its probability. So we're going to multiply all those together and then add those results up to get our final answer. Now if we wanted to do it with the calculator, we would go back to our stat button and hit enter so that we can edit our lists. And I'm going to go up and clear these two lists out that we already had. So I'm going to enter my x's in L1. and I'm going to enter my probabilities in L2. And I can actually go ahead and put this in here as one divided by four. I don't have to figure out the decimal because the calculator will do it for me. So just for each of these, I'm going to put in one divided by four. And then I'm going to use the one bar stats. So I'm going to push stat and then arrow over to calc, select the one bar stats. And I still have this where this comes up on the screen, so I need to tell it L1 comma L2. Even if you get the other type of screen, you can put the L1 and the L2 in there. And here's what we get for our mean. So our sample mean for this is negative 0.25. That is the same as our expected value. So if we had done it by hand and added those results together, we would have gotten negative 0.25. It's the same thing that we're getting it by doing it this way with the calculator. What this means for expected value is that if you play the game a whole bunch of times in a row, you're going to lose an average of 25 cents per play. That doesn't mean that you're losing 25 cents on any one play, but if you play it a bunch of times in a row, that's the average amount of money that you use per play. Okay, one more example. For this one, we have another game where we're drawing one card. 
This time, if it's a face card, uh, the player gets $5. If it's an ace, the player gets $8. And for any other card, the player has to pay the dealer $3. So we're going to find the expected value of this game for the dealer. So we need to think about our probability distribution in terms of what the dealer is getting out of it instead of the player. Okay, so here's what our probability distribution would look like. So this is if we have a face card. In this case, the dealer has to pay out $5. So that means that we put a negative 5 in there for the outcome. If it's an ace, the dealer has to pay out $8, so the dealer is losing $8. If it's any other card, then the dealer actually gets paid $3. So in that case, it's a positive outcome, a positive 3. And here are our probabilities, and these come from just how many of each type of card there are in the deck. Since there are 12 face cards, then the probability of drawing a face card is 12 over 52. Since there are four aces in the deck, the probability of drawing an ace is 4 over 52, and the 36 over 52 is just what's left over. So all the other cards that aren't face cards or aces, there are 36 of those. So we have our x values and our probabilities. And I'm going to do this one just with the calculator. So I'm going to go back to stat and edit. I'm going to clear out my lists. I'm going to put my x's into the L1 column. And my probabilities into the L2 column. And again, I'm just putting them in just like they are on the slide here. So I'm doing 12 divided by 52 for the first one, and then 4 divided by 52, and then 36 divided by 52. And the calculator goes ahead and calculates the decimal values so that I don't have to worry about that. Now, to get my expected value or my mean, I'm going to do stat calc and select one bar stats and then again I'm going to tell it L1 comma L2 push enter and here's my mean the mean is the X bar if I round that to two decimal places which would be rounding it to the nearest penny that would be 31 cents Okay, so the value that we get for our mean is 31 cents. That's the expected value. That means that for the dealer, if he plays this game a whole bunch of times in a row, he can expect to make an average of 31 cents per play. So for example, if he plays it 100 times, then he can expect to make about $31 because for each play, you can expect to make 31 cents. You take that times 100, you get $31. That doesn't mean he's going to make exactly $31 if he plays it 100 times, but that's about what he can expect to make following the probabilities that we have over here.